Good afternoon and welcome to today's mission status briefing. It is flight day 10 with the STS-133 crew. And with me this afternoon is Royce Renfrew and he is the lead flight director for the International Space Station. Uh, welcome Ren, uh, Renfrew and uh, let's begin today with a little bit of an update and then we'll take some questions. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I told you all yesterday that <clears throat> we had three major activities we were gonna try to accomplish today and I'm happy to report that uh, we got all three of those activities almost entirely complete. I'm very excited to have completed all of those activities today. The, uh, <clears throat> the first one we, uh, I want to talk about is the oxygen generation rack that uh, Commander Kelly was working on today. We went in and put a filter into that system. As I told you, we want, wanted to put some chemicals into the OGA and uh, put a, a little screen in there to filter out some particulates. We got uh, Commander Kelly in there. He did that work for that us this morning, and then we spent some time commanding it from the ground. Got a little bit behind the timeline there because we had to tweak a few of the parameters for a couple of hours to get it to behave exactly like we wanted it to so that that uh, 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 remediation kit that we installed functioned as we wanted it to. Uh, we eventually got that going a little bit late in the timeline and, and uh, did the activities that we wanted there and then uh, turned Mr. Kelly on again to go in and uh, remove some of that equipment. Some of it is still installed. And then this afternoon when I left console, we were actually doing one last test on it. So we still have a, a, about an hour's worth of ops on the ISS commander's activities tomorrow to go back in and strip out all of that uh, temporary remediation kit that we installed today. So we'll take care of that on uh, flight day 11. We also took a couple of samples, some water samples to bring home on Discovery so we can analyze that back on the ground. And then I hope to get the OGA back up and running uh, in the increment as soon as we've done the analysis on those samples when they get back on the ground. So 95% done there with uh, maybe an hour's worth of work on the commander's timeline tomorrow. Uh, the other major or the second major activity that we did today with uh, Mike Barrett and Paolo Nespali working on the lab carbon dioxide removal assembly. Uh, uh, Dr. Barrett took the one of the front uh, beds out of that seizure that had a short in it we, that uh, shorted out during EVA-1 and we decided to go ahead and uh, do the in-flight maintenance on that today, particularly because Mike Barrett had done that previously during his increment, exactly the same signature. We needed him, needed him to do exactly the same thing. So he took that bed out of the seizure and then you got to see over his shoulder a lot today while he was working on those very, very small wires with the multimeter testing a bunch of wires for us until we found where exactly the short was. And I, it was somewhat humorous to watch uh, medical doctor Barrett with a pair of forceps in his hand reach in and get those small wires out and clip them. Uh, we put all that back together. Mike did a, another uh, great job on that. We put that back in the lab uh, carbon dioxide removal assembly in the uh, air revitalization system rack or the ARS rack uh, this evening and uh, spun that up and I actually had a text message from the, the engineering folks not too long ago that said that seizure is now back up and running so it's happy and healthy and uh, Mike Barrett's work on that uh, worked perfectly today. Then the third major activity that we did today with the remainder of the crew was to finish our PMM outfitting activities to, to get rid of all the launch equipment that was in there, all the stuff that we needed to make sure that nothing got rattled loose while Discovery lifted off the pad and went through about three Gs going uphill. Once we get it into zero G, we no longer need all that hardware. So we spent a lot of time with a bunch of crew members today going in and removing that launch hardware, transferring some of those platforms that we no longer need on orbit, the integrated stowage platforms, and uh, a bunch of launch hardware over to the HTV uh, transfer vehicle. And we had a camera pointed in there as well today so you could actually see the crew transfer stuff out of the PMM into the HTV. We also spent some time, as I told you yesterday, getting some additional stuff out of the HTV. So we got the food out of there today that came uphill and uh, moved that into ISS. Uh, and all in all, just a great day. So we're, uh, I'm ready to declare that the PMM is essentially ready for business uh, as a module on board ISS at this moment. We still have maybe a launch restraint bolt or two that we need to go in and turn, but it's really, uh, it's really ready to go as a permanent uh, attachment to the International Space Station. We'll start using that module. Uh, as it was designed to use. So all in all, just a, just a great day on orbit. The, the additional plus one day 
that uh, the, uh, we wound up uh, with the docked mission here was very well used in getting the ISS in the, in the absolute best config we can be in for discoveries undock. So then tomorrow, uh, a couple of different things are gonna go on. Uh, we're gonna get the, uh, the hatches closed about 2.30 in the afternoon central time. Uh, <clears throat> we'll also have uh, the management teams for both the shuttle and the International Space Station tomorrow have their discussion and give their go, no go for the undocking. And then the undocking is actually going to occur uh, Monday morning at 6 a.m. central time. Uh, Discovery will undock from uh, ISS for a landing on Wednesday at uh, 10.58 central is the first opportunity at uh, Kennedy. And with that, I turn it back over to you. Thank you, Mr. Renfrew. We're going to take some questions here from our reporters, and then we do also have two reporters on our phone line. So we're going to begin uh, first with questions from the audience. Any questions? Denise Chow. Denise Chow at space.com. Um, there's some cargo transfer that's scheduled for tomorrow morning. Um, is that also work on the PMM and the HTV, or what's going to go on there? Um, what we need to do tomorrow morning is get the, the, the late stow activities done. There are some time-sensitive payloads on board the, the uh, ISS that we need to get transferred over to Discovery, and we want to do those as late as we possibly can so that we get them on the ground. Uh, in good shape so we can get them out of discovery. So we hold on to those until the very, very last uh, opportunity to transfer those between the two vehicles, and then, uh, and then, we'll, get the, and then we'll get them back on the ground for that time-sensitive payload. And, and there are a couple other odds and ends that we need to get thrown across the hatch there, but uh, essentially uh, the majority of the transfer ops is done. Um, and do you know if there's anything special planned during the farewell ceremony for um, to commemorate Discovery's last flight? You know, the, uh, the uh, Commander Lindsay uh, is going to do a, uh, a tribute, I believe, is in the undock timeline here that where they're going to have some, uh, some activities related to Discovery's last flight on their, on their free flight day after they undock. And I'm sure that both Commander Lindsay and Commander Kelly will have something special for the activities tomorrow, although I'm not, uh, I'm not familiar with exactly what they plan for the last, uh, the last day of Discovery Dock to the ISS. Mr. Perlman. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Um, can you just remind me uh, what the advantage is of having the crew shut the hatches the day before undocking rather than doing it all on the same day? Is there, is it mostly for the shuttle crew's um, benefit or is there an ISS benefit as well? Uh, it's it's really for the the shuttle crew because they have a really 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 busy day after they undock. They're going to do the fly around. They're going to they're going to get into all their preps for landing. So the one of the advantages is get the hatches closed the, the night before, which is a relatively extensive operation for both crews, is to get that done and then let the crew get uh, get a good night's sleep and then wake up in the morning and first thing punch off. So the uh, so the orbiter crew can then spend the rest of the day. So they don't have to get up in the morning and then uh, shut the hatches, and that just extends the day. And uh, can, can you just address a little bit what the ISS crew's activities will be after undocking? How, how much uh, recovery, so to speak, do they need after a shuttle leaves to, uh, to get back to normal operations? We, we have some activities that we need to perform on board ISS. It's not, a, it's not an extensive list, but we need to put all of our equipment away that we have out for a docked mission, some of the, some of the uh, ventilation lines that we, that we have scattered out, and we get the, the, PM, uh, the pressurized mating adapter depressed after the orbiter undocks and a few other odds and ends, but there's not an extensive amount of, uh, of work that the uh, station crew needs to do after the orbiter undocks. So they'll get a, a well-deserved uh, little bit of time off there after Discovery leaves the, leaves the stack. Are there any other questions here? Well, then we'll go to our phone line. We'll start with Mark Caro. Oh, thank you, Mark Caro, for Aviation Week. Um, if you know, could you tell us what some of the late stow items are? Are they like medical specimens or other experiment? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> That's correct. The, the payload science, really, that uh, some of it, like I said, is time sensitive. So we're going to take it out of our minus 80 degree uh, uh, Fahrenheit, uh, or minus 80 degree, the Melfi freezer, I can't remember the acronym stands for, the really cold freezer on board ISS, and we're gonna put those in the glaciers 
in uh, Discovery's mid deck to, to bring them home. So, like I said, we want to do that at the very end of the transfer day so, so, uh, so those uh, time sensitive payloads can be uh, taken out once we get Discovery back on uh, the tarmac at KSC. Thank you. And uh, now we'll go to James Dean. Uh, thank you very much, James Dean from Florida today. And uh, Royce, I just wondered if um, during the farewell ceremony tomorrow, you know, to what extent you'll be reflecting on the fact that it's one of the last few times we'll see a shuttle crew uh, uh, saying goodbye and, and closing a hatch and, and um, of course, the last for discovery. Uh, personally, uh, this is uh, I've been working on this mission for almost two years now. This is this has been a wonderful experience for me to go do this as the, as a lead uh, uh, station flight director for Discovery's last mission. Uh, it, it'll be uh, I think the term that a lot of folks have been using is bittersweet because I'll uh, I will be and am currently ecstatic about the way that this mission has gone. We've, we've planned it and we've planned it and we've planned it and just to actually see Discovery come off the pad and have an opportunity to actually go execute the mission and to see it fall out as flawlessly as it has done is just a wonderful feeling for a flight director to look at all the hard work that we've done and, and handle all the uh, curveballs that the, the vehicle has thrown at us or the uh, throughout the mission with the the various failures that we've had during the docked ops and be able to take those in stride and actually to execute the mission as designed is just glorious. Uh, and on the on the flip side of that, obviously you, it is absolutely true that uh, this is the last time Discovery will be at ISS. This is the last, uh, one of the last shuttle missions we'll ever do to ISS. So that, uh, that has some bittersweet components to it, but uh, really I think uh, I'm just very happy with uh, the way the mission has gone, the way the ground teams have executed, the way the crew has executed, I couldn't be happier. So it's going to it's going to be uh, difficult for me not to feel happy, even though I understand this is the last time Discovery is going to be there. Thanks very much. Are there any other questions? We will uh, wrap up this evening's briefing. Just a couple of updates. The next mission status briefing will be tomorrow. That's Sunday, March sixth, at twelve thirty p.m. And then there will, of course, be uh, over the evening hours and the very early morning hours at 12.45 a.m. Central Time, the ISS Flight Director Update. For continuing coverage of the final mission of Discovery, be sure to stay tuned to NASA TV. For more information about NASA and its programs, uh, be sure to check out www.nasa.gov. Thank you and good evening. <laughs>